followed by the pound sign. Please enter your access code followed by the pound sign. You entered nine five five nine six seven. If this is correct, press one. To re-enter your access code, press two. There are twelve participants in this conference. Please announce yourself. Okay. My name is Tell me, um, can you tell me which state you're calling from, please? States? Virgin Island, okay. Albany, New York. Albany, New York. Washington. Washington, Maria, I know your voice. <laughs> New Mexico, Ontario. New Mexico. Ontario, Canada. I know you. Hi. Yes. Yes. Hawaii. Hawaii is there. Okay. Anyone from Georgia? They are not there. I'm Cheryl. I'm Cheryl from Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas, Cheryl. How are you? I'm fine, Good. Do I have somebody from Massachusetts? Okay. They are not they are not there yet. Now, I want us to all of us collectively to 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 lift up this meeting tonight. Let us ask for the Holy Spirit to be mighty. All of us, let's ask the Holy Spirit to come. Let's ask for the presence and the power of God to manifest big time. Let us all lift up our voice and begin to pray. Father, I worship you. I lift up this meeting to you. Holy Spirit, take over. Lead in a mighty way. Be greater, be greater. Be greater than my giftedness. Jesus, you said without you we can do nothing. I need you here, Jesus. Do something for your people tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. I'm in a conference. I'm in a conference right now. 
อาเลลูยาน o w I want you to begin to pray to bring bring every problem that you came with. I want you to open your mouth and make it known and available to God tonight. Begin to pray. Begin to cry out to God about a problem. Tell Him you are ready to let them go. For the release of the gift of faith, ask for the release of the gift of faith. Ask for the release of the gift of faith. Tell God that you believe, that you believe, that you believe. Father, I bless your name and I thank you. I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you for miracles. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Now let's go straight to the teaching for today. I have asked somebody to read Genesis chapter one, verse twenty-six to twenty-eight. How many of you have your Bible there? Five. Okay. Yvonne, do you have your Bible there? Uh, no, I'm sorry, I don't. Okay. May I have to go outside and listen to me? Okay, I'll put you Okay, let, let, let's listen to the reading. Somebody's reading now. Yes, begin to read, begin to read, begin to read. Um, the lady from Hawaii, begin to read. image 
according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I'm going to begin to talk on something. Somebody else is going to jump in, and then, until we finish, um, see what happens. As, as, I, as, as, we, as, I, as I turn on the electronic devices for recording, and the telephone system, the, the three telephone system were on, suddenly the light went off from the building. Suddenly the light went off, and that is all the different things. And then just suddenly the light just trigger off from the neighborhood. It's around the neighborhood because I see people, I see people uh, uh, coming out and checking and seeing what is happening. So that's why if you are watching this video, you will see me leave like twice just to make sure the light is on and, and the thing is on again and all of that. Okay. Okay. Um, the topic we are dealing with tonight says, it says, um, begin to discover you. Okay, let's continue. Begin to discover you. Until you begin to really know who you really are. Your ability to function on earth will be very, very limited. Let's start from the spiritual side. How did Jesus define God? Jesus said, God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Please, is everyone, could everyone hear me very clearly? Yes. yes. Okay. You see, the Jewish people saw God differently from how Jesus knew God. And so Jesus said, God is spirit, primarily. And since God made us in his image and likeness, then it means that we are first and foremost what? Spirit. Every human being coming to this world is a spirit. You are a spirit being. You are not just human, you are a spirit. Every one of us is a spirit. Why? Because the one who made us is a spirit being. So you don't expect a cow to breed with a cow and produce a cat. Or a tiny little rat to breed with another rat and produce a cow. like father, like son, and daughters. A human being will reproduce a human being. God will reproduce his kind, likeness, image. Which means that we are primarily and functionally spirit beings. We are not just humans, but spirits which means that we should always go back home inside ourselves and where is home 
spirit. Spirit created the, the physical realm and the mind realm. But sometimes we concentrate too much on the material, the money, the emotional, the food. We concentrate more on the material and the mind than the spirit. So we have to begin once again to go back to where the root of every blessing and every power dwells. And that is the spirit source. If we begin to go to God, like I was sharing with a sister today, and I said to her, pray to God on a personal level. Don't talk to God from a, uh, the perspective of what the church has taught, taught us. Almighty Father, God of power, omnipotence, all of that. Is that how we address our Father? If we go into the presence of our Father, do we start by saying, Hi, Papa, mighty Papa, oh, great Mama, oh, wonderful, magnificent Mom and Dad. How would they think of you? They would think you are crazy to address them that way. How do you address your father? Hi, Dad. Hello, Father. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mama. Personal level. Until our relationship with God becomes spiritual and on a personal level, we don't receive anything from God. Have you ever been to God and you said to God, God, how do you feel? Is there anything I can do to make you happy? First and foremost, establish a spiritual relationship with God. That is because you are primarily a spirit being. Now let's go to the mind and human. Somebody has something to say about this. Hello? Hello? Yeah. I think you're probably trying to formulate what you're saying and process it, you know. Um, can you repeat again the question, please? No, 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 no. Somebody else has to come in, jump in and share with us how we are made in the likeness and image of God according to our human and our mindset, our mind and human. Well, I like what you're saying. I well, there is, there is somebody that I'm calling from Hawaii to jump in and let us know. Is the sister from Hawaii there, please? No. Okay, she's not there. Okay. Um, is the sister from Massachusetts there? No. Um, is the sister from New York there? Hello? Okay, where is it that in our humanity and our mind, what makes us in the likeness and image of God? Could you jump in like in a minute or two? Then the other person from Ontario, I think that was somebody from Ontario who wanted to jump in or somebody else, please jump in. Okay. Who again want to jump in really quickly, please? There was somebody that wanted to speak before you. Was, was that you? It was me. Okay, go ahead, please. Okay. When you were saying that um, we should address God as like, hi, dad, hi, father, uh, it makes me think if you want to talk about how we're made in God's image, I mean, we want to give good gifts to our children, right? Right. And we want to do the most amazing things for our kids. But we don't understand that God even wants to do even more amazing things for us. Right. As his kids. We're made in his image. So if we want to just shower our children with good things, how much does he want to 
want to shower us. We got that idea from him because we're made in his image. Yeah. He that, that love from him, that he wants to do that in our lives. We got that from him. Okay. 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 That is really great. Now, let me also add this to what you've said. You see, our mind was not just given to us for a show. Mind was given to us to exercise. One of the greatest things God enjoy is when God, when God begins to see you come before him, to let him know the way you think about certain issues. God does not just, God doesn't just, God, God does not just um, do something. He always want to seek opinions of heaven, opinion of spirits, the supernatural world. God is interested in knowing how you think. Let me give you an example. God decided to wipe out, to kill all the children of Israel. And Moses said, listen, if you kill them all, what makes you different from these other gods, blood-tasty gods? And the Bible says, and God listened to the voice of Moses and did not do it. Sometimes God wants to hear your opinion and you may not know, God will accept your idea. God loves conversation and interaction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God Almighty also wants you to take care of your physical body. Make yourself happy. Do things that will enhance your life. Do things that will make you to be more. I was talking to a sister today and she was telling me how she 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 has she's trying a new hairdo, a new hairstyle. How she's trying some some new new uh, 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 what do we call it? Um um what is it? Is it some 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 new nails and things that will enhance her and bring her out? God is not an ugly fellow. God is extremely beautiful, extremely handsome, extremely is awesome. In fact, there is no word to describe how God really is in terms of his beauty. Beauty is not enough. So God gave us the physical body so that we can survive on earth and also so that we can enhance ourselves and even look more better. And he gave us a mind so that we can think and be creative like he is. God has a mind. God has a body. Although God's body is a glorified body. And we too, sometimes we will reach that place. Sometimes, sometimes in our spiritual journey with God, we cross that path between earth and heaven. And what happened? We entered into that glorified state. God has eyes like we have eyes. God has brain like we have brain, but spiritual ones. God has mind like we have mind, have legs, have hands. It's all there in the Bible. So we are in his image. We are created to be like him, to function like him. And when you know this about yourself, you've begun to discover yourself. You are on the journey, on the path to knowing who you are. You will never be able to know, to discover you, until you discover who you are in God. How God created you. How God made you. Very, very important. And now let me go to the other things that are the virtues and characters of God that is spoken to us and we don't pay attention to it. We think it's just about us humans. But it's actually divine being spoken to us. One, he said in verse 27, and God said, be blessed. Blessing 
is part of being divine. Only spiritual people carries the blessing. Blessing is more than money and material resources. But money and material resources is also at the center of the blessing. It's part of it. You cannot have the blessing without having money, without having houses, without having material accumulation, without having greatness, fame, riches, without having power. These are all that God gives to us that are in the blessing. That makes you to be in the likeness and image of God. You must have the blessing. You must believe that you got the blessing. You got the blessing. Begin to tell that to yourself. And that is how you discover yourself. One of the things that you have to do to begin to discover yourself is when you begin to talk to yourself about who you are. When you begin to speak to yourself and say, this is who I am, then your body begins to listen. Then every cell in you begin to absorb what you're saying and they begin to go towards that route. When you begin to tell yourself, I'm poor, I'm sick, I'm that, always. You always say bad things about yourself. Then everything in you will, will have a meaning. And in that meaning they say, oh, we hear sister, uh, sister Anna says that uh, she's going to die. How many, how many organs and tissue want her to die? Every one of them will lift up their hand and vote yes. Why? Because your mind, your body, your spirit is following what you are saying and they are following where you are going and they are following what you are doing. Hallelujah. If you begin to say something like when you wake up in the morning, I am a happy person. Today, I dare believe myself that I'm going to be happy. That I'm going to be happy. Nothing will stop me from being happy, joyful, and wealthy. When you begin to say that about yourself, everything inside your body, soul, and spirit, they will go and have a meeting. And in that meeting, they will say, did you hear what Bro Matthew or Bro John is saying or Bro Devon, Devon King is saying? Have you heard what Sister Shirley? Did you hear what Sister Nicole? Did you hear what Sister Cleo? Did you hear what Sister Chinyere? Did you hear what Sister this and that and that? Did you hear what Maria is saying of Washington is saying? Did you hear what Sister Gibson, Yvonne is saying? And they say, yes, we heard. How many of you are in favor of it? All the cells and organs and tissue and everything in you will vote yes. Because what you say is where they are going. Everything inside you, your mind, your body, your spirit, everything inside you are waiting to receive an order from you. Did you know about this? Everything inside you is waiting to receive a word from you, an instruction and a command. So be careful what you're saying. Because you are made in the image of God. You got the blessing. Whether you believe it or not, you got it. Number two, be fruitful. Let me find out whether whether the sisters from um, uh, Sister Junior, are you there? Okay, I think they got, I think something happened and they are off the line. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I don't know what's happening today. <laughs> Number two, be fruitful. Being fruitful is part of being in the likeness and image of God. You cannot say that you are in the image of God and the likeness of God. You cannot, you will not even be able to discover who you are until you discover that you were sent to this earth to be fruitful. What does it mean to be fruitful? It means everything you do brings, solves a problem. Everything you are doing in life brings you profit. It brings you big, big profits. Because with fruitfulness, you will also discover your giftedness. Your giftedness is the seed that brings about your fruitfulness. 
So make sure that you are fruitful. Let me tell you what the Holy Spirit told me this week. How many of you want to hear about this? I want to hear it. Okay, this is what the Holy Spirit told me this week. I have never heard of it before. I know that last month, God told me that he's starting something completely new on earth. That every of his sons and daughters come to him to ask him for money, for healing, for this, for houses, and nobody they come to him to ask him, Father, give me an opportunity and I will have everything. And that's what I've been doing. All my life I've been going to God to ask God to give me an opportunity. Create a chance for me. Create an opportunity for me. Create a space for me. I'm not asking you for money. I'm asking you to create a space for me. Create a territory for me. Create a state, a city, a nation for me. And God said, America is your nation. Now he's sending me to a state. Now he's sending me to a city. And now, Lord, I want a space where I can function. Give me an opportunity. Give me just one shot. Just one package that contains everything. Joseph had one chance to become a leader in Egypt. He saved himself. He saved Pharaoh. He saved the people of the nation of Egypt. He saved the entire world and he saved his family. Everything he ever needed, he got it. He got a wife. He got two kids, Manasseh and Ephraim. He got position of honor. And the Israelites lived in the best portion of the land. One chance we should be praying to God and asking God, since we are made in your image and in your likeness, give us one chance. Give us one opportunity that contains everything we ever needed. The house, the car, the marriage, the, the money, everything. The investment. That's what we should be praying and asking God for. But let me tell you what happened. God began to tell me that he is starting what he called with me. The age of opportunity. He said, everyone who follows my ministry, if they ask him to give them an opportunity through me, he will do it. He will create something, even where you will not believe that something good is going to come out of. God said, he's going to make you strike gold. Where other people come and they find sand, God is going to make you, when you arrive in the same place, you're going to find gold and diamond. Can I hear you say amen? Amen. amen? Where other people go and they fell, you'll go there and you'll become a success and a millionaire and a billionaire. Everyone in your family, all of them, their marriages were wrecked. They got disappointed after one or two, three marriages. They were so frustrated, no more marriage. And so everyone in your family, nobody's married. Everybody has babies outside marriage. Or in, in one marriage or the other. And after that, everything just fell flat. Nobody in your family has ever been made rich. There is no one single millionaire that has ever come from your father's side or your mother's side. Like I was telling one, one brother and one sister today, and I said to them, do you know why there is so much opposition against you? And that's the same thing that I want to share with those from Ontario, those of you from Albany, those of you from Bronx, those of you from, from, from Ohio, those of you from Massachusetts, or Hawaii, those of you from the British Virgin Islands, Grenada, those of you from different, different places, Dallas, Texas, all places, Georgia. I am saying to those of you, the reason why there is so much opposition against your life is because you have been chosen to be the first person to be granted a great opportunity in this world. You are the first person that God has chosen to make rich in this world. That is why there is so much opposition against you. And do not succumb. Don't lay down flat and say, okay, the world is so bad. I want you to stand up on your feet and say to yourself, I know now why there is so much opposition against me. It's because I have been chosen for something big. I am a generational breaker. You've been chosen to break the causes, the witchcraft, the spells, the incantation, the enchantment of former generations. All that they have been doing, all the voodoo's, God has chosen you to break it. Hallelujah. 
You have been choosing to be the first person in your family to drive a nice car, to drive an SUV, to have a shop, to have your own beauty saloon, to have your own gas station, to have your own insurance company, to have your own bank, to have your own church, to have different things in the world. And that's why there is so much opposition against you. And you think it's just funny that there are just natural things happening? Why is your health under such an attack? Because the enemy knows you have been chosen to be fruitful. You have been chosen by God to do something powerful on the earth. Don't take your life lightly anymore. Your life is bigger, far more bigger and better than you think. One of the sisters in Canada was talking to her some days back. I asked her to pick a pen and write what the Holy Ghost was telling me. And she wrote down and I dictated something. I said, be greater than the present moment. I want you to be greater than what you are passing through. Be greater than what is happening to you. I want you to swear an oath and say before God, no matter what is happening to me, I am far more better bigger than this present time and I will be. Say to God, I am going to be rich. I am going to prosper. I am going to be healthy. Every good thing is going hap to happen to me. Say to God, I stop every war that has been coming against me. When you begin to talk like God this way, God will begin to talk on your behalf. Hmm. Number two, multiply. He said multiply. What is the meaning of multiplication? It means that the gift that God has given to you, that gift, need, you need to use it to influence the entire world. Don't die in this world without people in this world hearing about the good things you've done. Let them see your books. Let them see your movie. Let them hear your song. Let them see your businesses. Multiply it. Look at McDonald's started as just one little fast food joint. Today is all over the world. Pepsi Cola. Coca-Cola started in a little sh shack out there in Atlanta. Today is all over the world. That is what we call multiplication. That is the likeness and image of God. If you say that you have discovered yourself, you must be able to discover that you are called to multiply. And if you need a child so bad and there is no child in your life and people in your family find it difficult to make a baby, you need to call me. You need to come to this conference because we will pray and break it and people will start getting pregnant in your family so that your generation will continue. Do you know the reason why the enemy bring barrenness to people? Do you want to know? You want to know why barrenness exists in some families? Because the enemy has seen your future and the future of your family. You've not seen it, but they have seen it. They know that presidents are about to be born through your bloodline. They know that senators are about to be born through your bloodline. They know that chief executive officers of the best oil company, the biggest banks in the world, they know that superstars of, of music, movies, sports are going to be born through your bloodline and they want to fight it. All the fight that you've been having in your life is summarizing one thing. It is about your future. It is your tomorrow and the next how many years before Jesus comes back. That is what is being contested for and you don't know it. Your future is what the fight is about. It's not your today. That is the reason the crafty and deceitful one will send a bad man into your life. And a man will come in your life and you will, oh, what a beauty, what a nice handsome man, so educated, so great. Wow, you fell in love, boom. 
After a few years, love runs away. You chase after love, love is gone. And both of you start to fight. Why? Because that man was sent, or that woman was sent into your life to stop your future. Everything is being done to stop your future and the future of the next generation that is going to come through your bloodline. That is where the fight is. The fight is about stopping you and the next generation from worshipping the true and the living God through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That's what the fight is about. Multiply. Let the earth know about you. Don't, I don't want you to be born in one little quiet spot and you die in another quiet spot. Nobody knew you were here. Except the obituary about you in the newspaper. That is bad. Jesus was born in a manger. He didn't live in a manger. He didn't die in a manger. And today he's not living in a manger. He lives in heaven. Use Jesus' example. Tell Jesus to do something big through you. And he will do it. Then the next thing. Fill the earth. Influence the earth. Let the earth hear about you. Fill it with your influence and your scent. Mark the earth with your scent. Let your gift fill the earth. There is nobody who is given the kind of intelligence you are given. There is nobody that is given your kind of beauty or, or handsomeness. There is nobody who is given the way you, you talk, the way you do things. You are not repeatable in history. Fill the earth with who you are. Fill it. Fill it with humans. Fill it with good things. And then the next thing, subdue it. It means there are things on earth and in the heavenlies that will always want to come to earth to influence the earth. There are powers, there are wicked people. Take authority over them. Dominate them. God is calling you not to allow Satan to dominate you. Not to allow wicked people to take authority over you. And people call me, oh, that man, that, that man took my wife, that woman took my husband. Are you kidding me? Where were you when they went to go and do witchcraft and acquire power and pay a lot of money? And somebody like myself, I'm here, you are not coming to me to come and get the same power. Neither are you going straight to Jesus. When are you going to spend some time and come to people like me and say, tell me how to acquire power with God and I will show you. So that nobody come to take away from you what you have worked hard for. You get married, work with a man or a woman, bought a house together or build a house together, have kids together and all that is taken away from you. Runs away, sweep the bank account and left. Your joint bank account. I'm not talking of his personal account. And they sweep it and they go away. And you think that is funny? And you say, I'm going to leave that to God. Are you kidding me? Next thing. Have dominion. You must discover you. That you have been called. To a bigger position, more than Satan was called. More than the fallen cherubs in their places of rulership are called. First and foremost, you are an authority. That is power. You are a ruler. You are a prince and a princess. And not only that, you have what angels do not have. Only Jesus is called Lord. You too. You have dominion in Christ Jesus. With God. So I want you to begin to think about this. Begin to think about how serious you are. That you are more than you believe about yourself. Please you are. I, I don't understand why Christians should live in fear. I don't understand it. Why should you live in fear? These are the things that I want you to discover about yourself. But let me, let, me, let me summarize by telling you this. What is the one single thing 
that we as Christians need in today's world. I'm throwing that open to everybody. Anybody can jump in and say something. What is the one single thing that we need to stay victorious and to be who we are called to be and to become successful? What is the one single thing? Let's deal with it tonight before we begin to pray. To stay close to God. Okay. What is that? Please speak up. Speak up. Favor. Favor. Okay. Who again? We be more like Christ like. We be more like Christ like. Okay. Okay. Walk in love. Walk in love. Okay. We need to be more faithful, okay? Is that it? Is that the one single thing we need in order to be more, in order to appropriate, to begin to walk in these things that we are studying tonight about who we are supposed to be or who we are already in Christ Jesus? Remember that everything I'm telling you tonight has already been granted to us through Christ Jesus, our Savior. So I am asking you, what is the one single thing that will make everything become effective? Mm -hmm. Okay. To have a good relationship with God, okay? Okay, let me tell you the one single thing that we need more than anything in today's world, in the practice of our religion, in the practice of Christianity, in our discipleship with Christ. The one single thing we need more than anything is power. I didn't hear one person mention the word power. That is what is lacking in almost every religion you can think of. That is one single thing that is lacking in Christianity, is power. We have a lot of the word of God, a lot of teaching, a lot of preaching, a lot of singing and dancing, a lot of books, DVDs, videos, prayers, but we don't have power. And that is why my ministry is out to do one thing, to demonstrate the presence and the power of the Almighty God. It's about power. This earth that we live in and the heaven that we also live in, that is our home. As far as the supernatural, the mind and the physical realm is concerned, power is the most important thing. You want to know that power is so important? Look at the American election. Election 2012. Look at how some people were to be limited not to vote. Some people, the district are, 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 are redone so, so that somebody will have power. It's about giving power to somebody or to some group of people. That's what it's all about. Look at how businesses are set up around the world. It is to give somebody or a group of people money. That's all it's about. Money power. Intelligent power. Intellectual power. Power to dominate. Some people marry within a particular class. Why? To have power. A lot of people are are tired of our Christianity. Why? Because there is no power. They do not see the exercise of power. A man said this to me last two weeks. I called a family and I prayed with them. And he said, we'll see. I said, really? Okay, this is, this is a case of power. I'm going to play it. 
Because there is another side of me that you guys do not know. When I swear an oath about your situation, it's going to change. And that takes me, it takes a lot to push me there. But when I'm pushed to that place where I swear an oath that as far as I'm alive, I'm going to do this for this person. I'm going to make this happen. And God is my witness. Nothing going to stop me. So I said, really? You say, we'll see. I said, okay. So I came back and I said to God, tonight, I want you to open the door for that man and for his business. Period. That's all I said. And I said it with such a passion in me that if you are where I'm praying that kind of prayer, you will marvel because my, my, my physical life is altered at that point. It's a matter of life and death when I need certain things. And what happened? I called the wife today and we were talking and the wife goes, oh yeah, he traveled. Oh yeah, it came. What I asked for came. Because power is all it is about. The power to heal the sick. The power for money to appear. The power for people to cancel your debt. The power for you to have a baby. The power for you to be married and stay in a marriage without losing it. The power for you to have a job. The power for you to have communication with the throne of the living God and receive results. The power for you to cast out demons. And that's why I said to churches and to pastors, have you ever, when I see somebody in Tamar, a pastor will ask him, there are two things I want to ask you whether you've ever done them. Have you ever casted out demons? I'm not talking of psychology, doing people's psychology. No, no, no. Or psychotherapy. I'm talking of, have you ever casted out demons whereby demons talk back to you and you tell them to leave and you see the person falling down and the demon telling you and begging you that he's leaving. You say, come on, go. I don't need to hear your voice. Leave. If the person say yes, then I will say, have you ever healed a sick person? Have you ever, with God inside you, you say to a sick person, go and you are healed. And the person went and they were healed. If those two things are not happening in the churches you are going to, in the ministries you are running and following, if healing, and if you don't see real healing happen, like it happened in my ministry, if you do not see real miracles happen, and demons are casted out, like some people, while I'm still, while while I'm pick the phone to call them, and they and they immediately they pick up the phone. Yes, Bishop, is that you? Is that Reverend Doctor Dika? I say yes. Then suddenly they change. The demon in them will say, Reverend Doctor Dika, I don't want to deal with you. I'm leaving. I'm going. Please, thank you very much. And they leave. <laughs> I have not even said demon. I cast you out in Jesus. When when they hear my voice, they begin begging me not to not to not to come after them. They say we are leaving. Please, thank you. Oh, yes, thank you very much. We are going. We don't. And then sometimes I will hear them telling the man or the woman, We warn you not to call this man. <laughs> we warn you not to call this man. You went ahead and you saw him on YouTube and you decided to call him. You see, now we don't have anywhere to go. Because demons are jobless and homeless. They need somewhere to find, they need somewhere where they can, they can occupy and do their wicked things. They need a body to occupy and do wickedness. And so if the church is real, if the ministry is real, demons are going to be casted out. People are going to be healed. Those are the two signs of the kingdom. If you say the kingdom of God has come, I want to see healing. I want to see miracle. And where, when I pray for people, this thing doesn't happen quickly. Give me a few days. If it doesn't happen, I will want you to ask God, what is going on with me? What is it inside me that I need to change? Is there an attitude or behavior that I need to change? What is it? Tell me. And then when I begin to pray with you, if you can do that seriously, not only that, you must have passion. You must want what you want with a passion, with a big desire. Don't come looking for things small, in a small way. Well, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, well... God will take, no, 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 no. If I'm going to God for something, I want result. It's not a matter of, well, if it happened, it happened. If it doesn't, no. I am going there so that it happens. I'm not going there to play yes or no. I'm going there for a yes. 
I don't need a no for an answer. And when I'm pushed to the wall and I go for a yes, nothing going to stop me. Even all of the demons in hell will flee. That's why when people tell me go to hell, I tell them I've been there many times. They didn't want me there. Hallelujah. What you need today is power. The one thing that makes you in the, in the likeness and image of God is power. You need power. Begin to ask God for power. And let's go into prayer right away. I want you to lift up your hand, begin to say to God, I need power to be like you. I need power to have money. I need power to have my business. I need power for this. I want you to lift up your mouth, lift up your voice, and begin to shout out to God and say, I want power so that I can be me. Let's pray. Come on, let's go. Lord, fill me with power. Oh God, I need power. Above all things, I need power. You said I will receive power when the Holy Ghost come upon me. Fill me with power tonight. Fill me with power tonight, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I need power to overcome. I need power to be rich. I need power to demonstrate your presence and power. I need power to pray and to fast and to see results. I need power to bring the right people to the ministry, to bring the right people to worship you with me. Lord, I need power. Power is what makes me to be in your image and likeness. The exercise of power, that is all it is on earth. This earth, this earth is a place for the demonstration and exercise of power, and I need that power now. Lord, feel me. Lord, feel me. Lord, feel your people with power tonight. In the name of Jesus, fill your people with power tonight. Because without power, they can do nothing. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to begin to pray for the church. Begin to pray for the church. Ask God to return back the power of the Holy Spirit upon the church. Ask God to return back that power. Let the revival break out in our ministry. Let the revival break out in your life. Ask God for a new outburst of power. Ask God for a new outburst of the Holy Spirit in your life and in your family and in everything you do. Let's pray. Come on, let's go, please. Lord, I need a new outpouring. A new outpouring of your power to pray. Power for worship. Power to be famous, to be great, to be rich. Power to rule and power to lead. Power, oh God, to heal. I need a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon my life, Lord. Pour into me, Lord. I release and I receive it, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. How many of you believe that God has given you power? Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Tell, this is how we are going to do it because I want you. No, listen, listen. Because a lot of us believe in Jesus, believe in the Holy Ghost, believe in the Father, but we don't think that we have power. So let's do it tonight. Tell me, okay. where, tell me where you are from. Don't mention your name. Tell me the, 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 the state or where you are. And then I'm going to tell you something. When you say, when you say where you are, and then I'm going to tell you something. Ontario. Ontario. Nicole, New York. 
can. How many of you be truthful, believe that you qualify to have power over this earth, in the heavenlies, over every demon in hell? How many of you? I want you to make sure that you are not just saying it because faith is at work right now. I want you to make sure that what you are going to say, you mean it with a force inside you. If you believe that tonight, God has given you power. I want you to say, I mean, let, let, let's do it accordingly. I want somebody, the first person will say, I am from New York. I believe that from tonight, God has given me authority, rulership, dominion, and power. I want to hear it from you because everything inside you, including your spirit, is waiting to hear it. Not only that, until you say it, Angels will not be at work for you. So let's begin with the person from Dallas. Let's go. I'm first Hi, yes. Dallas, and I believe I have a complete rulership, dominion, and power in the name of Jesus. Okay. That is that is how faith is born. Faith is released when you say it. Next person from Dallas. Okay. God has given me Do you believe that? Do you believe it with all your heart that from now on you have power? Yes, I believe it with all my heart. Okay. All right. Let's go. Ontario, Canada. Okay. Next person from Canada. I believe, I believe that I received power when the Holy Spirit came upon me. I know I need to learn even more about it. But I have power and dominion in Jesus' name. Okay. British Virgin Island. I believe that I have, I have more than I was born in me. I believe that I can rule and live in Okay. Okay. Devon, repeat this after me. I believe with all my heart that God has given me power right now. And that God does not lie. And that no power in hell or on earth has power over me anymore. Because what Jesus has done for me on the cross has given to me power right now. I believe that the Holy Spirit has come upon me and that I have real raw power to do mighty things on the earth. And to shake heaven and to shake the earth. Okay. Others, other states that have not called, if I did not call you, tell me what state you are and tell me that you believe this. I want to hear it from you. Because angels are waiting to hear it from you and they will begin to go on assignment. Because we are going to call an angel to go on assignment on your behalf tonight. But they are they are to hear from you that you have power. Let me hear you. Okay, Albany, okay. New York, New York, New York. Good. Next. Okay. Who again has not spoken up? I believe I have power, dominion, all my heart, mind, and soul. Okay. 
Is John is 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 John on the line tonight? John from Canada, are you on the line tonight? Okay, she's not. Now there is one thing I want you to do when you leave this prayer line tonight. Go and look at the mirror and tell yourself exactly what you are affirming tonight, what you are confirming tonight. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, faith is born tonight in the life of your people. I make a pronouncement. I write it into a decree, a status. That all that they've spoken tonight is real and true. And that they are standing like a mighty army that cannot be defeated. Eternal Father, I release angels to go to every city where they are tonight. And begin to do something mighty. Angels, I release you to go to the four corners of the earth. And bring about what the people of God need. Each of you tonight, you are going home with an angel. The Bible calls angels spirits like winds. You are going home with spirits, with angels from the throne of God from tonight. Some of you will begin to see vision and fall into trances, begin to dream big dreams. Many of you will be healed. Many of you, your fortune has changed from tonight. I want you to let go of every fear. It's unnecessary. I pronounce upon you that everything you've asked God to do for you tonight I release them and I call them into your life. Everything that we held back in the heavenlies, I break the heavenlies and I command those things to be poured into your life. How many of you believe that you're going to receive a miracle from this time forward? Okay, I want you to begin to thank God for giving you a miracle. Lift up your voice. Tell God, thank you for my miracle. Come on, let's pray. Begin to thank God for your miracle. Lord, thank you for my miracle. Thank you for my miracle in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for my miracles in the name of Jesus. Thank you for financial breakthrough. Thank you for drawing people into our ministry. Meek people, people who are ready to receive the word, soil for me to sow into. Lord, thank you for giving me miracles of the things that I've been asking you. Thank you for big, big miracles in my life, oh God, and in the life of your people. Thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Carry this anointing to your family. Now, let me tell you what's going to happen. When you reach home, if you have members of your family at home, just go and touch their hands and greet them. And silently in your heart, you are saying, Oh God, take position of this person. Let what is in me begin to happen to this person. I want you to begin to share what is happening to you with people. May the Almighty God bless you with His peace and power, love and a sound mind. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Is there anyone who has a testimony here, please? Anyone who has a testimony since the last time we met? Is there somebody who has had some big miracles happen? Um, Washington, and this actually happened in California. Okay. Um, one of my cousins, the one that had passed away, one of her children went into the beach to swim. And the current almost drowned in her. And by the grace of God, a coast guard uh, spotted her. And she was saved, alive. And she went back again to the beach with no fear. And so we were praising God that she did not drown, that she is still alive and kicking. 
and my other uh, cousin's son. Um, sometimes we don't know where he's at, and God has been protecting him wherever he's at, and we're always happy that he is safe and that he comes home and we praying, and God hears him and bring us right back at home. Okay. Next. Somebody should tell us. There are some of you that have told me of some big miracle. Tell the world, please. This is Charlotte from Canada. Um, I had an exam today that I was not prepared for, but between, like if I had had this exam yesterday, I would have failed it. But I know um, I prayed to God and, and people prayed for me. And the exam was out of 65, and I don't think I got less than 61. The Lord was giving me wisdom while I was taking the exam. Okay. So I'm very grateful to God tonight. Okay. Yet yeah, I've been praying with that sister for a while now. So there's there's more than there's more than an intellectual miracle that you are gonna receive. I hope you're prepared for that. New York, is there any miracle? Hawaii, Massachusetts, Georgia. Who is talking from Georgia? Who is that? You were on the line tonight. I didn't know that. Yes, I was. <laughs> okay. Praise God. Praise God. Alice, you are going to get a big, big miracle. The reason is because you've been praying for a long time. Yes. Long before, long before you met me, you've been praying and asking God for a miracle. And I swore before God that you must have a breakthrough and there's a reason for that because i want your enemies to see you in your glory i want them to know because there are people who swore to you that as far as they live you are not gonna see any good in the land of the living and i i re-swore and destroyed their oath and i said as far as god is god this lady from antigua your life is gonna be different and that is how it's going to be. Thank you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I want to ask you, um, the email that's on uh, your website, if I want to send an email 
email to you. Is that the one I should send it to, or is it another email? Do you okay. have a personal email? That is the email you should send it to. The guy married 2000 at gmail.com. Okay, 2000. Yeah. At what? At G Mail? At Gmail. Or Gmail. Dot com. And if anyone want to donate, you go to the Kai Mary's ministry. There is a button there. And then you can donate or you can you press you 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 click on the button and it will take you two, three minutes and it will be done. Okay. It's very secured. Very, very secured. Very private, very secured. All right, and let's do this, and then we close. If you feel like lingering to pray a little bit more concerning anything, please stay and pray. When you, when you feel you've prayed and God has heard you enough, then you can leave the prayer line. So I open this time to anybody who just want to stay and pray and talk to God. Just lift up your voice and begin to pray. When you when you are tired, you just leave the prayer line. Let's begin to pray. You can pray about for your family members. There are many of you are family members who need prayer so that they stop disturbing you. You know? So let's begin to pray. Is there anything you want to pray about? Pray about it now, briefly, and then leave the prayer line. Dear Father, I begin to pray tonight. I pray for the health of my mom. I pray, O oh God, for Bobilia. I pray tonight for Feba and Praise and their mom. I pray tonight, Almighty Father, for my siblings. I pray tonight for all those who call the ministry that I have prayed for. Oh God, I pray for them tonight. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in their lives. Lord, I pray for the Packers. Lord, I pray for the Sheridas. Lord, I pray for Eric in Sweden. Lord, I pray for Game and Anthony. Lord, I pray. I pray, oh God, for the Cleo and Thomas. I pray, oh God, tonight for Sherry. I pray, I pray for Cynthia. Lord, I pray for Beth. Lord, I pray for Nick, Nicole, and Natalie. Lord, I pray for Jocelyn. Lord, I pray, I pray for all those around me. Right here, O oh God, in Wichita. Lord, I pray for my village at the Andiorica. Lord, I begin to pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon our ministry. Take us to a new level, O oh God. Lord, I begin to pray for a new outpouring of worship, a new outpouring of prayer, a new outpouring of ministering unto you, a new outpouring of your presence and power. Lord, I begin to pray for, for Kerry and Dragon. I pray for Quasi Evans. Lord, I begin to pray for Antonio and their family. Lord, I begin to pray for your people all over the earth. In Jesus' name, I pray for Marsha and for Devon King and their sons. I pray for them, O oh God, for their kids. I pray for Mary. Pray for Yvonne. Lord, I pray for Katumo. I thank you, O oh God. I pray for the Shelby's. Lord, I pray for Eric Carter. Lord, I pray for different people who have called at different times. I pray for Yvonne Gibson. Lord, I pray for all these people. Many, 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 many that I cannot for Mary and her family. I pray, oh God, for miracles to begin to happen in their lives. In Jesus' name. I pray for those who go to our sites to watch our videos, to watch the videos. I pray for them, oh God, that your spirit will take over their lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. And amen.
Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Good night. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Good night.